First, we place the goldfish on a damp cloth, cover it lightly, and then carefully spread out the tail fin like this. When we zoom in on the tail fin with a microscope, you'll see something truly surprising. I recently visited a store that specializes in ornamental fish to buy a goldfish. As I looked around, I was surprised by the variety of goldfish they had, from ones with lumpy heads to those with bulging eyes. However, these aren't wild goldfish. Goldfish are actually a type of freshwater fish that belong to the Crucian carp family. Humans have been breeding them for their looks for a long time. This breeding is especially popular in China, where most of the unique goldfish come from. I hoped to find a simple, single-tailed goldfish, but there were none available. So, I picked two goldfish that looked the most like the original wild species. Ta-da! Here are Gigantius and Marcius. It's really cute how goldfish open and close their mouths. That's how they breathe water through their gills. Isn't that adorable? Goldfish are a favorite pet for many because of their bright colors and strong survival skills. They can live in places with very little oxygen, slow water movement, and even in cold water. Some experiments even involve quickly freezing goldfish and then thawing them out to see them start moving again. Because of these tough characteristics, Goldfish are often used in science experiments. In this video, I'll show you some really interesting things about fish. We'll do this experiment with the help of Gigantius, one of my goldfish. Fish mostly breathe through their gills, but they can also breathe through their skin. This lets them survive outside of water for a short time if they are kept wet. So, we wet a piece of gauze, lay Gigantius on it, and cover him with the wet gauze. Then I spread out his tail fin to take a closer look. While making sure his gills stay moist, we zoom in on his tail fin under a microscope. As we get a closer look, can you see something moving? What I'm excited to show you today are the red blood cells in a goldfish. If we use an even stronger microscope, you can see the red blood cells more clearly. These cells are all moving in one direction because they flow through the body in a path that circles around the heart. The red blood cells move in a line because they pass through really tiny blood vessels, which are just big enough for one cell at a time. This is how red blood cells travel to every part of a goldfish's body. Why are they always moving? Because red blood cells are special cells that carry oxygen around the body, in animals like us, and fish. In simpler animals, the oxygen-carrying parts are just in the blood itself. But in animals like fish and humans, there are special cells called erythrocytes that do this job. When fish erythrocytes pick up oxygen from the gills, they deliver it to other cells in the body, and then bring back carbon dioxide. To the gills to be released. This makes red blood cells super important for breathing. The job of red blood cells is pretty much the same in fish and humans. But there's a cool difference. Human red blood cells look like donuts without a center, and they don't have a nucleus. Fish red blood cells, on the other hand, are ovoid and do have a nucleus. Interesting, isn't it? After we finished filming, I made sure Gigantius was fully okay, and then put him back in his tank. Along with Gigantius and Marcius, I brought some other goldfish with unique looks back home. I'll share more about these special goldfish in the next video. This is the end of our look at fish red blood cells. If you liked it, please subscribe to our channel. This was Fishy Science, revealing the wonders of science.